Forces in the mounting yard, here are our friends at ITV. Krebus, we see him here looking very handsome, this son of Dubawi, bred by Godolphin. And he's a second foal out of First Victory, who is herself is a half-sister to Thunder Snow, is a Group 1 winner. On the dirt, he's had three runs at Newmarket in 2021, including a first place in the Group 3 Autumn Stakes. He won the 2000 Guineas on his first run of 2022, and he's looking to be the eighth horse this century to do the double between those two races. This is his first time ever in his career running away from Newmarket, but he's taking the pump and glamour of Royal Ascot in his stride. Dropping back here to number 10, Tony Proctor at the head of Mighty Ulysses for the Gosden team. His red hood on here. Frankie de Troy will be in the saddle for this horse, bred by Hascom and Valiant Stud. It's a three-year-old colt by Ulysses. He's from his first crop. Ulysses, of course, was third in the Prince of Wales Stakes himself. This is the third foal out of his dam. He was 170,000 guineas as a book one horse at Blanford, when bought by Blanford Bloodstock. Four runs, fifth in the list. It was his highest grade to date, so this is a massive step up in class for him. Well, the favourite here is Caribus, Guinea's winner, trained by this man, Charlie Appleby. Charlie, how's he training coming into today? Yeah, no, delighted to be honest, Charlie. He looks great. He's exactly the same weight as he was in the Guineas. Uh, he looks a stronger individual, but he's exactly the same weight. And uh, look, uh, the challenge for him today is his first run away from Newmarket, as I stated before the Guineas, you know, that's why we didn't purposely didn't go to Newbury in the end. Um, but uh, what we've seen so far in the preliminaries, he's taken it all very well. Matt said that given he's going around a bend where he's drawn, he's a hold up horse, that there could be the potential for him getting boxed in. How real a threat do you think? that is look Matt's right I mean you know those challenges are ahead of him but uh, look William's got all the confidence in the world he knows the horse I feel he's on the best horse in the race and uh, look if the splits come uh, he's gonna be one of the last horses off the bridle and uh, you know on what we've seen so far to date uh, this year he's a horse that's got the acceleration appreciate the uh, the interview thanks Charlie brilliant thanks Ollie so Caribus the 2000 guineas winner trying to become the 16th horse to do the guineas St James's Palace double cv looks good so far three wins from four jason i thought it was a spectacularly good guineas at the time but native trail was workmanlike in ireland are there are a few question marks today well look the one question mark still sort of hanging over is was it a favored part of the track where caribus ends up maneuvering and you know we got a couple of horses who stayed on down towards the stand side and closed in um, you know, there are, there are horses in here, the likes of Light Infantry, who wasn't a million miles behind, who ran some, some decent figures on the way through um, when he looked at halfway as if he was going to fall out of the telly. And uh, Johnny was describing the challenge that Will Buick's got from stall two. I, yes. Something that's lived with me for years when Pinatubo ran in this race. And you said Will Buick asked him twice to accelerate. You get one go at Ascot, particularly with the uphill climb to the finish, yeah, don't you? And as Charlie was just talking about there, you know, there are going to be times when you find yourself in a bit of a pocket, but you have to give them that real gutsy, brave man's ride. You know, that's what you have to do. You've got to get in amongst it, ride the race accordingly, and hope that it opens up. Back to Ollie. And I'm joined by professional paddock expert Ken Peterson, who's cast his eye over the runners here. What call your eye? I think it's a really good race, Ollie. I mean, both of William Haggis's horses, Mal June and um, My Prospera. I'm sorry, yeah, My, Pros My Prospera, sorry. Yeah. He looks really well. I think My Prospera has again has taken a step forward since his win at um, Sandown. Caribus looks well. I mean, I was a little bit unsure Guinea's Day, how fit he was. He looks a lot better today. So he's tightened up. Yeah, he's tightened up, so he looks well. And I was impressed by an outsider, which was Wexford Native, who is a as nice horse as you'll see. He's a really cracking race. So it's a really good race. Give me one, the paddock pick. If on the look, I say my Prospera, my Prospera will be the paddock pick, and I'll just say Wexford Native may run better than his price suggests. OK, thanks for the update. Thank you. Yeah, interesting. Wexford Native, who was fourth in the 2000 Guineas for Jim Bulger, who's won it twice. Here's Lucille, horse number eight, who was sixth and unlucky, actually, in the 2000 Guineas. He looks a lot calmer than he did that day, actually. I think he was quite lively, got a bit upset in the stalls, missed the kick, but actually did really well to finish where he did, you know, from out the back. So I've got him on my OK, list. it's 22 to 1 chance. Here are the Team Valley Colours and the Ballylynch stud, who own Bayside Boy, David Egan riding. There is Wexford Native, Ken's fancy there, followed by New Energy. Good luck, Sheila Lavery, first Royal Ascot runner. Second in the Irish Guineas, here's the even money favourite, Caribus, for Will Buick and Charlie Appleby. Now odds on at 10 to 11. How big a challenge do you think Will's got here? 
It's not ideal being drawn in there, but the ideal spot, as I said, on the round track, the round tracks makes it a little bit more difficult. The ideal place to be is fourth, fifth down the inside, but you, then you need luck, you know, and you're the favourite, so it's what? It's 12 against one. When you're the hot favourite, everyone else wants to beat you, and if they beat you, they think they have a chance of winning the race, so there'll be no love lost down the inside there. He just needs to get him relaxed early, get him in a nice rhythm, turn into the straight and then he needs the gaps to open he needs to fo be following the right horses but I, I was very impressed with him and I think the way Charlie Appleby is speaking about him he has improved from the guineas the difference between Caribo he's got a very high natural cruising speed um, and, I, and I think that horses make their own looking races a lot of the time whereas you've got the, the likes of um, Mr. Mr Prospero of William Haggis's he was off the bridle a long way out and he'd be a trickier horse to ride through the race than, than Caribo would be. Though Mike Prospero looked pretty good at Ascot this evening, beat, beating the Queen's Reach for the Moon, who we'll see later in the week. And uh, the further he went, the better he got, but Tom had to be at his strongest to get him up there. And, and then he, he got there and he won comfortably, but if he's having to hunt like that, in a, in a big, strong field like this, it, you know, the gaps aren't just going to... It's not going to have a smooth run round, I don't think. It, it, it's a competitive race. I can see between the three the three furlong marker and the furlong and the half, half out, I can see it being very congested because there's a lot of horses that will be there. In that scenario, though, if you're on the best, Johnny, and you're travelling, and we know that Caribas travels, you just sit and ride him accordingly, don't you? And you have to wait that extra four and five strides longer than everybody else for it to just open that door slightly. And as you're saying, Hayley, if, if you're going well enough, then you can go and attack it. Yeah, I think one that probably is going to get a nice run round is Mighty Ulysses, who is a big step up in class, but he's been, been trying to get him to stay a mile and a quarter. He's dropping back to a mile today. Frank is drawn 12. I think he's just going to let him jump, bowl along. He'll be sort of perched on the outside of them. No hard luck stories from him. Frankie de Tori in front, though, that's dangerous. I don't like that. If I'm on the favour, I do not like the look of that, Jason. Yeah, if you looked up forward and you saw it was the Tory stand of control, you get a panic on immediately, just thinking, I need to get up, I need to be forward here. Because everybody in this race will be thinking to sit, box seat, second, third. I just don't see a front runner, bar Frankie, on the front end. That jockey cam's on Tom Marcon, who's just riding brilliantly at the moment, yeah, isn't he? Yeah, he is, like... Like, I'm such a huge fan of, of Tom, his work ethic and the way he trains. Um, he's been using the Brass Monkey Ice Baths every day, which like, is like a new thing. That's what you've been doing. Yeah, it's a new thing, but it's just, you know, this time of year, we're riding every day, we're driving miles and miles, and sometimes we don't have to go time to go to the gym and do workout, because if you're working out, you, you're tearing your muscles, your body's aching, and the ice baths are just a a simpler way of just rebooting the whole system. He has to be riding well because his bloody wife probably he's not even the best <laughs> rider in the, he's not even the best rider in his own house. <laughs> <laughs> One nil Holly at the moment. Yeah. They come to meet Luke. Here just walking down that's new energy who ran so well in Ireland last time. But over here, just turn around. Caribus is a glorious looking horse. Just going through there. <laughs> you might be able to hear, look, look at Frankie's red hood. The horse has actually pulled, Mighty Ulysses has pulled it off. Look, it's, it's come off his ears. Look, Frankie's just taken his own hood off. Not that he needed too much calming down, Mighty Ulysses. He's, he looks very, very quiet indeed. There in front of us, that sparks a shadow. Andrew Boarding's horse, who ran well in the, the 2000 kids. Do you know what, believe it or not, it's so hot down here, yet yeah, these horses, the older horses, these middle distance horses, they take it so much better than the, the sprinters. That was almost scary down. So just very quickly, Kadam that didn't that didn't come out of the stalls or got rid of Jamie Spencer. I was watching and literally as the starter pressed his button, the horse reared up. Jamie had no chance. Um. And just confirming the steward saying a non-runner. Uh, Cardam, so you'll get your money back if you bag that horse. Here's Angel Blue in the Mark Chan colours for Rafe Beckett and Rob Hornby. Where does this one figure in the market? Yes, Caribus. Look at the price. 11 to 10 from 5 to 4 on this morning. As I change the Royal Ascot Stock Exchange, it's gone back to evens, Caribus. 
So evens Caribus just slightly on the drift there. Who do you like to ride, Jason? I think that you, you'd probably pick Caribus, wouldn't you? Um, I just got a, a sneaking feeling. He, he probably looked like he will come on. I'm fascinated to see how Akel gets on for, for Aidan O'Brien. You know, he's returning. He's probably a bit burly, and he's he's obviously not been the easiest, or he's taken an age to to come to hand. So um, I will um, I'll, I'll keep a close eye on him. There's Caribus on the left, having his first run outside of Newmarket. Round a bend today as well. New energy, big day for the Laveries. It is, yeah. First run on Royal Ascot, very nice horse. Travelled very well in the Irish Guineas. For me, he just has to get home. Uh, maybe didn't get home in the, in the Irish Guineas, but it was a straight mile. The round track will definitely uh, help him. He's a horse that travels really strong. And, um, you know, he, I, I'd love to see, see him run a big race for Sheila Lavery and the team. Small team at home, but doing extremely well. I said earlier, first Royal Ascot runner, be her first Royal Ascot winner. And the first in this country of real note as well, a 28 to 1 chance. Berkshire Shadows won, Hayley, that no one seems to be talking about. He's a Royal Ascot winner already. Yeah, and ran an absolute blinder last time out. Um, he's, he's a very consistent, solid horse. He'll run his race. He puts in 110%. Um, he's a great horse to have on the side. And will absolutely love the ground. Roger Vary and Jason's got Bayside Boy here. Yeah, and, and they're sort of forgetting him off the back of just one bad run over in France. And it didn't happen for him at all. He was pushed a little bit wide uh, in that contest and, and never really got back into it. So we are underestimating him on one bad effort. Do we underestimate the German 2000 guineas, which won uh, by Maljun? He's, he's unbeaten. You like horses coming in with unbeaten records. It's a big step up um, and he has to run a career best today. So it's another Group 1 that dates back to 1834, St James's Palace, the royal residence in the Tudor period, and a big field for Mark. And they start right at the bottom of the hill. Remember the first race this week on the round course as mighty Ulysses, the pace angle in the race, moves forward into line. Now in goes loose sail into stall number four. There is Kevin Manning on Wexford Native in stall three. And so the last one about to step forward now. Last one going in is Caribus with William Buick. That's it. They're in the gate. And they're off in the Group 1 St James's Palace Stakes. Just hustled along early as Wexford Native to go the early gallop. And one of the first ones away is Luce Sale. He's been taken on towards the outside by My Prospero. And towards the inside is Ical. But it is Luce Sale who has the lead. Ical racing in second. My Prospero out wide in third. Wexford Native hustled up early but now lit up and keen. And also Caribus is very keen racing against the rail. The all blue jacket in fifth position and he's really straying the reins early on his outside is new energy another one who's keen in behind is angel blur then on the inside rail is bayside boy who's racing alongside mike ulysses frankie did not go on in fact he's sitting chilly towards the rear of the field so too berkshire shadow and the back marker is mal june they're very tightly grouped as they head now on inside the final three and a half furlongs of the st james's palace stakes and it is ical on the inside of loose sail the these are still the first two. My Prospero just a length away towards the outside in third. William Buick in a pocket at the moment on Caribus, looking for racing room. So too is Wexford Native. Then towards the outside, mighty Ulysses begins to unwind. New Energy is travelling really well in that red and yellow striped cap. That's Robbie Colgan, but they're racing inside the final follow and a half. It's Luce Sale who has got the lead. Now Caribus has got a seam up against the inside rail. My Prospero is boxing on. Here's mighty Ulysses down the wide outside. Bolcher Shadow is another one picking up. A half furlong to go. Caribus a slender lead. Lucille is gamely fighting back. My Prospero is there. And it's Caribus. Caribus has just got the head bob. Flying was Maljum, but Caribus got there. My Prospero, Lucille, and also Maljum all involved for the minors. But William Buick had to wait. He had to wait. And eventually the gap came. And when it came, Caribus, maybe workmanlike, but he has got there to get the head bob and he is won by probably it is just ahead it might just be loose sail for second maybe with on the other side my prospero where has mel june come from he has absolutely flown but the guineas winner has done it caribus has won for the first time away from newmarket but william buick he had to wait he had to sit he's a lucky lucky boy in the end
in a race that turned into an absolute tear-up in the straight. Where did Mal June come from? So much to look back on. But this horse has done the Guineas St. James's Palace double up the rail, Johnny. Yeah, um... He was he wasn't he wasn't in a great position and uh, Lucille uh, the jockey on Lucille should have went to the rail he let him through he let him through he had a perfect posse he went by the one in front he should have drifted over onto the rail William Bu uh, William Buick was boxed in he was he had nowhere to go but when the horse in the in the Lucille moved out gave him the dream run up the inside and he needed he needed that dream run to win because he just hung on but he was very keen air, air, early edge, they went slow and it was a real sprint up the straight. He's nowhere to go here, Ed, he's gone. If the, if the, if the silver drifts over onto the Is this where Ruby Wall says, close the door, close the door? You have to close the door. You have to take advantage. You have to... You have to make that move to win the race. I don't know if he was far enough in front of him to close the door, though. He was far enough in front of the furlong You've and a half. you stick to the rules at the same time, Johnny. The, the rules are there, but I'll tell you, win the race first. There was loads of room to close the door at the top of the straight. Johnny, where did Mal June come from? That's it. They went so fast and they quickened up a bit further out and he, was, he had nowhere to go. He had nowhere to go. And he f absolutely flew home, Jason. Watch the jockey's body language as he goes up over the line. Kieran Fallon just here like he's absolutely flying and then his hand goes up. It's nearly like what on earth has happened there as if he's had a, an absolute flying finish on Mal June from nowhere. Look at that. Caribus the winner on the far side. Then you had Mal June between Lucille. Then Mike Prospero right in the mix. You had Frankie on the wide outside on Mighty Ulysses. Is that because they crawled early? Yeah, it is. But they've gone not much of a gap. Caribus, when we look back at this and you realise how much petrol he used on the way round, being very, very keen, yeah. he must have an enormous engine. Enormous. And some turn of foot as well. You could see from the celebration what it meant to Will Buick. Oh, William Buick, congratulations. What's the first relief at the line, or was it... Uh, <laughs> what were you thinking? You, you have to enjoy these good horses, you know. Um, I'm very privileged to be able to get on these good horses. But at the same time, it's a case of getting the job done and... This was one of those races where it was tricky, you know. Good draw, but good draw can turn into a bad draw very quickly. Um, you know, as you saw, he travels extremely strong, and um, and um, you know, just you just wanted to drop his head. And in the straight, you know, I had no option to go. Well, there, was, there was enough room, and he ended up getting a lovely run through. He's a very good horse. Um, want to get the job done the, the the moment will when you turn into the straight and you've got horses all around you and you're looking for the out what what's going through your mind at that moment well I had two options I could have come back a stride and gone around them which I was prepared to do um, but when when Dobsey went on and and so he didn't go to the fence it was a very natural place for me to go you know and this horse really took me in there and He's brave, he's got a turn of foot, he stays, he's got a great temperament, he's got a will to win. He's got everything you could ask for in a racehorse. Did you know you won at the line? Yeah. Well, how, how close was it? Uh, it was close enough. I mean, standing around a few of your teammates here, no one was entirely certain. But glad to know you were confident. And just about Caribus to have won the Guineas and now come away from Newmarket and win here. How good a horse does that make him? Yeah, well, this is like... St. James's Palace is always uh, the confirmation of, of the top three year old Myler. Obviously, he'll go on from here and take on the older horses. So, But, you know, this is the, of his generation. He's now between himself and Native Trail. They're the best Milers around. Well done, Will. Thank you. The fine margins, brilliant from Will Buick. Kieran Fallon, Ollie Bell just had a quick word with him and he simply said, I should have won on Mal June. Just couldn't get out when it mattered. He should have won, he says. But here is our winner, Caribus, winning the St. James's Palace Stakes, pulling off the double, the 16th horse to do it, winning the 2,000 guineas at Newmarket, and now coming to Royal Ascot and winning the St. James's Palace. And the next question, obviously, looking forward, Johnny, is who would you ride in the Sussex Stakes, Baid or Caribus? I think they're... 
Karibas has a lot of speed and it showed me today that he just about gets the mile. The slowly run mile today, he was far too keen. He just got home. He was at the pin of his collar. Um, I'd say Baid would outstay him in, in, in the Sussex. Jason Lucille has run well, and William Haggis will want to watch that race back over and Absolutely. over again. Yeah, and if Kieran has come back in and said that, you know, he should have won, he just the, the, the gap didn't open up, and you're not riding a helicopter, are you? And that's that's key, isn't it? And he's absolutely flown. Um, I suppose if they were all to turn up again, you've got to say that horse has come a huge way in a short space of time from Doncaster to Kempton to the German 2000 to here. That's a massive rate of improvement from the son of Caravaggio. He's, he's only finished fourth in the end. Absolutely flying, which shows you just how tight it was. There's the winner. Let's see the head on, Haley. And look, the yellow colour's right at the back. Yeah, he's, he's locked up. Um, he's obviously not jumped as well as the others, and he's just had to sit and suffer. Um, Lou Sale's been ridden completely differently to last time. He was naughty in the stalls, missed the kick. Um, Pat Dobbs has got him out, got him up there today. And you can just see he's rowing away here, Kieran, out the back. He's just running up the back of them. He's, he's, he's just... He's not really had time to get stuck into him. And as soon as he just gives him a flick there, the horse has just kicked into gear. But it's just all happened too late. The slow pace would not have helped him at all. It might have been a different story had the race been... Yeah, but as I said before, it was always going to be tricky. They went so slow, and I think the last bit, it looked like he was flying, but the ones in front were after doing all the running and they stopped, and he was staying on best of all. You do come off these races thinking, I was unlucky, but... No, he's, he'll, he'll have his chance again later in the year. 29 at Royal Ascot now for Will Buick. Number 12 for the trainer, Charlie Appleby. Yeah, and again, the photos being taken here in the winner's enclosure at Royal Ascot. Let's go and grab a, a quick word with Charlie Appleby if we can. He's just going to come over. Very kind of him. It's always busy in here, but it's the place you want to be, isn't it, Charlie? And, um, and he's backed up that impressive win at Newmarket with, a, with, a, with a, a tough, gritty performance today. A tough, gritty performance. Look, we knew coming into today that it was going to be a different style of a race. We were horses here that, you know, full credit to them. You know, they, they deserve to be here. And... Um, I just wish the pace would be stronger for him. That's what it was. Will, you know, William said he was just he was just taking me on all the way around there. And thankfully, on the turn, it allowed him to get a breather. I haven't had an in-depth discussion with William as yet, but um, I felt that you know it, it was class and determination that got us over the line there. Uh, going forward, um, we'll probably have discussions, but I think we might head to uh, you know obviously the, the Sussex is there as an option, and we got the, the you know the Prezac tomorrow as well. So, um, but wherever we go, I would like to ensure there's pace there. Goodwood provides the clash of the generations, and, and for many years we've had jewels on the downs. I think we're in our sort of eighth different jewel on the downs. William Haggis mentioned that he might go to Goodwood with Baid. How much would you be looking forward to taking him on if indeed you both get to Goodwood? I'm sure it's a discussion that we'd all like to have now over the next you know, coming weeks, should we say. But um, as we know, uh, you know, uh, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed and, and, and Team Godolphin are never shirk away from uh, a challenge. So, um, you know, it would be a, a good, healthy com conversation. And, and I think it's something that will be strongly looked upon. It probably goes without saying, but will you be mindful to avoid running Native Trail and Caribus against each other? They're both very talented milers. Yeah, uh, no, Native Trail this morning when I saw him going off for his second canter, I half wished I was bringing him here this morning as a, as a second bullet, but uh, he looks fantastic. As we know, Native Trail is going to step up to the mile and a quarter there in the... Uh, in the uh, eclipse, sorry, and um, I'm very much looking forward to it. So hopefully that might, you know, sort of keep them apart for the time being. Anyway. Okay. Well done, Charlie. Brilliant. Thanks very much, Charlie. Charlie Appleby, of course, uh, Australians very familiar with uh, Charlie.